The Friday night tough loss to the beast of the East, the Brooklyn Nets. Our Spurs closed out their seven-game homestand last night and trying to salvage a third win in their last five games against the 76ers. Coming up back-to-back -back triple doubles, DeJounte Murray gives the Spurs an early 5-2 lead with a jump shot. Then later in the first, Lonnie Walker drives through the defense, banks the layup. Spurs keeping pace with Philly. They trail 29-23 after one. Spurs would rally late after trailing by as many as 15 points in the fourth quarter. Spurs closed within two on Murray's steal and breakaway layup with 33 seconds left. But Philly kept up the pressure and held on to win 115-109 thanks to a late foul and some free throws. Philadelphia has now won seven straight over San Antonio. Jakob Pertl had 25 points and 10 rebounds, and DeJounte Murray ended with 19 points and 12 assists for the Spurs. Pertl collected his 16th double-double, surpassing last season's total of 15. We didn't shoot well in the first half. We shot a little bit better as the, as the game went along, but uh, down the stretch, we made a couple of defensive errors, two really gross defensive errors that took it from a uh, four and five and six point game uh, that, that took it out of reach. They still hung in, so that's all great stuff. But we have to learn to compete from the get go. The energy in the locker room in general is a little bit down right now because we really wanted to win that game. Um, felt like we had a chance down the stretch. We kind of came back, um, um, but it, it just wasn't enough. Um, and yet that, that hurts. Tomorrow's first travel to Houston to face the Rockets starting at 7 o'clock. Wednesday, they're back home to host the Grizzlies at 7.30. Friday, the Bulls are in town, and then the Spurs travel to Phoenix on Sunday. Busy week for the Silver and Black. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Best playoff weekend ever. Yeah, see, it sure seemed like it. Rams at Bucks. These two teams met each other in week three with L.A. winning by 10. Could they do it again this time in Tampa and return to the NFC Championship? Look good early. Rams winning 3-0 when Stafford finds tight end Kendall Blanton for the seven-yard touchdown. Rams led 10-3 after one. Fast forward the fourth. We're tied at 27 with 42 seconds left. Turns out 42 seconds, just enough for L.A. to pull off a finish that sent Rams to the NFC Championship game for the second time in four seasons with a 30-27 victory over the Buccaneers on Sunday. With four seconds left, Matt Gay makes the 30-yard field goal. Three straight divisional games end up being won by field goals, and now we will have a new Super Bowl champion this year. So it'll be Niners at the Rams in the NFC Championship Sunday, 5:30 SoFi Stadium. This is the first time in 12 years a conference championship game does not have Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady in the game. Let that sink in for a second. Yeah, now to the AFC Divisional game. Buffalo at KC. Both teams winning their wild card games by more than 20 points last weekend. First quarter, Bills strike first. Buffalo converts on two fourth downs. Devin Singletary scores from a yard out. Seven nothing Bills. KC responds. Mahomes with all kinds of pass protection calls his own numbers. Scores from eight yards out. We are tied at seven. After one, late the game, Bills lead 29-26, under two to play. That's when Mahomes throws to Tyreek Hill. He turns on the Jets, 64 yards to the end zone. KC goes up 33-29. 13 seconds left, Bills march down the field. Allen hits Davis for their fourth touchdown connection of the night. That's the third lead change in under two minutes. Bills up 36-33. Guess what? Three seconds left. Harrison Butker, 49-yard field goal to force overtime. Chiefs get the ball first. Go all the way down. Mahomes finds Travis Kelsey, eight-yard game winner. Chiefs win 42-36 in overtime. Unbelievable. So for the AFC Championship, it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals at the Chiefs Sunday, 2 o'clock at Arrowhead Stadium. Jeff, did you get to watch any of those games at all? So I didn't, and I hate I didn't. I went to sleep early, but a lot of people on my news feed blowing it up. So it, it seemed like a very intense game. I got to go back and watch. Oh, they were fantastic. <laughs> so really looking forward to these matchups for the uh, the chance to go to the Super Bowl oh, next yes, weekend. Oh, yes, and the halftime show. That's right. Looking forward to that. 444, about 51 degrees on your Monday. Up next, the first look at the case of a woman who died following a date with a man she met on a dating app. The family of a Bridgeport, Connecticut woman who died after a date with a man she met on a dating app is accusing the police of being negligent in their investigation. ABC's Janae Norman has the details in today's GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, a mystery that started with a dating app and ended with the unexpected death of 23-year-old Lauren Smith Fields. <laughs> Her family calling for answers about how she died last month. Bridgeport, Connecticut police say a man who said he met Lauren on a dating app three days prior called 911. According to the report, he told police they fell asleep. But when he woke up later that morning, he says she had blood on her nose and wasn't breathing. I just could not believe that my little, my baby sister was gone. Lauren's family now claiming police refused to view the last person to see Smithfields before she died as a person of interest. And we'll have more on this developing mystery coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. Let's take a look at TransGuide right now, I-35 at Randolph. Traffic is moving smoothly, as you can see. Everybody's starting their Monday off the right way, it looks like it. Yes, ma'am, except for that Except right for that, there. yeah, that yeah. popped up right there. But it's just one lane. The ramp is still open, uh, probably construction. You know how it goes around here, Jeff. Yeah. All right, Mike's here, and I only caught a glimpse of the picture behind you, Mike. I'm definitely intrigued by where this is and oh. when this was. Well, this is a couple of days ago, okay. and just put the hose in tree. I used to do this as a kid growing up, either like fill water balloons and hang them outside and let them freeze up or, uh -huh. or spray the hose there to get icicles. From. What? Yeah. Well, you didn't have to work real hard to get icicles in the Detroit area, well, did no, you? Well, no, no, because it's cold <laughs> most of the time, but... Um, yeah, it's just kind of kind of cool, kind of fun to do. So uh, we don't have any chances for any of this anytime soon. Temperatures are going to be staying on the cool side, but not as cold as the last few times we've had fronts move on through here because we do have another front coming through tomorrow night into Wednesday. And it'll just kind of uh, trim temperatures a little bit. This morning, though, grab a jacket, a rain jacket, maybe a light, uh, maybe a little umbrella, something like that. There's not a lot of these scattered showers, but a few of them that are moving on in here. So down in the uh, southwest, West and the south side, everything's kind of moving off to the east to northeast. And again, as you can see from the color, this light shade, everything is basically on the lighter side. Maybe a, you know, a moderate shower here or there, perhaps even off to the east later on today, a stray thunderstorm or two, but not that's going to be the exception, I think, rather than the rule. And as far as rainfall totals, if you're lucky, you may get a half an inch of rain in spots here and there, but that's going to definitely be the exception rather than the rule. And these uh, little scattered showers out in portions of the hill country. Most of this rain is going to be lasting through about uh, mid to late morning and will continue to, to move on out and clear on out by uh, late morning and right around noon. Water vapor imagery upstairs in the atmosphere. A lot of that coming on in here, and that's going to help to keep the clouds kind of stubborn today. Now, as far, as far as the humidity is concerned, we do still have relatively dry air in place. All of these numbers, dew points, measure moisture in the atmosphere, have gone up considerably compared to yesterday. And the other thing to notice is they're not really going to move all that much, maybe even going up a little bit. And so with this situation and with that extra humidity tomorrow morning and Right now, the forecast is for mostly clear skies overnight. That would set us up for some fog tomorrow morning. So uh, some computer models keep a, a couple of clouds around here, though, but that's something to, to be on the lookout for. All right, by even a lot of models have even by 9 o'clock, a lot of the rain moving on out and moving off to the east. But clouds kind of hanging around here. Uh, I think we're going to see some sunshine by noon, and then by late afternoon, we'll see more sunshine, especially off to the west and clouds off to the east. And then this model does have... A uh, few clouds around here by tomorrow morning, but again, cloud cover that would help prevent a lot of the fog from forming up. If we have clear skies all morning long, then uh, fog looks like a pretty good chance. And we're also going to be getting up into the mid 60s by uh, tomorrow afternoon. And then as we go on into the middle part of the week, like I said, another front moves on through here, just trims temperatures somewhat, keeps us on the coolish side and setting up for a nice looking weekend. Anyway, first things first today, uh, I'm maybe being a little too optimistic, partly cloudy skies by noon, 52 degrees, and then a high temperature today, only 55, partly cloudy skies. And then once we get into tomorrow, we will start off the chance for some patchy fog. And again, that's really dependent upon cloud cover overnight and right around 40. So again, it's going to be jacket weather, probably not in the afternoon tomorrow. Next front moves through. And again, it's not this huge blast of cold air, just keeps jacket weather around. A couple of showers late Thursday into the wee hours of Friday. And weekend looks really nice. Chilly morning, warm afternoon, plenty of sunshine up in the uh, mid 60s, mid and upper 60s this weekend.
Well, I tell you what, that Saturday, even hovering around 50, it felt a whole lot colder than that, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, it was a it was a nice day to kind of stay inside. Yeah. Good thing there's a lot of football games on and everything. But yeah, yeah, it was pretty chilly out there. So, all right, all right now. Thank you very much, Mike. Right now we're at 452, about 51 degrees. Still ahead, a preview of a new streaming series that's being described as Downton Abbey, an American style. Here are all your lottery numbers this morning. We've got the pick three, which is three, four, eight, fireball zero. Daily four numbers, seven, nine, one, eight, fireball two. Cash five, two, 10, 15, 19, 21. Lotto Texas 16, 25, 33, 45, 46, 49. And your Powerball numbers this morning, 8, 14, 33, 36, 67. The Powerball is 17, the Power Play 2. Good luck. A new series tonight starts tonight on HBO Plus. Spider-Man reclaims the box office. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It's Downton Abbey American Style. The Gilded Age is the new show from Downton Abbey creator Julian Fellows set in 1880s New York. It dramatizes issues of class and race in the post-Civil War era. Fellows telling me he was fascinated by the new money titans of the time like J.P. Morgan and Andrew Carnegie. The whole culture that they developed with their wives and brought to New York and made a, a way of being rich that was America. It wasn't a pale copy of a European tradition. It was America. The Gilded Age debuts tonight on HBO. Spider-Man swinging into the sixth spot on the list of highest grossing movies of all time worldwide. Hello, Peter. Over the weekend, Spider-Man No Way Home passed 2019's The Lion King and 2015's Jurassic World to land in sixth with one point six nine billion dollars as for the weekend box office spider-man returns to number one in north america with an estimated 14.1 million last week's champ scream 2 drops to second and happy birthday to david diggs the hamilton and snowpiercer star is 40 today while acclaimed singer songwriter neil diamond is 81 and that's what's happening in hollywood i'm jason athens and abc new los angeles we're moving right along right now. It's 457, about 50 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on U.S. U.S. Russian tension. Now that the State Department has ordered the families of all American personnel at the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine to leave the country. Plus, some iPhone users say their screens can sometimes do this, turn pink purple. What Apple's saying about the problem coming up in Tech Bytes. In the live look right now, taking a look at Trans Guide. You know, the roads are pretty decent right now. We'll be back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The State Department is now ordering diplomats' families to leave Ukraine amid growing worries of a Russian invasion. The latest details coming up. And we're starting at five with a live look outside with live cam. A beautiful shot of San Antonio right there. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, January 24th. We hope you had an awesome weekend and tried to stay warm. Jaffe Gray sitting in with us this morning. Good That's to have right. you here. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for being here with us this morning. We're going to take a live look at our weather with our own uh, Mike Osterhage. What's going on? Well, it is a little bit milder this morning than what it has been the past couple of mornings. And we do also have a couple of showers around the area. So grab a light rain jacket, maybe an umbrella. 50 degrees right now. The normal average low temperature is 41. So again, way above that and way above where we were over the weekend and uh, throughout the rest of today. We're not going to be warming up all that much. We'll only make it into the uh, about back up into the mid 50s by late this afternoon. As far as the aquifer, it did go up two tenths of a foot in the, on yesterday's reading, should say, and mountain cedar and mold both dropped down significantly over the weekend, both very, very low. Here's what it looks like on radar right now. We just have a couple of light scattered showers. They developed late last night, and that's pretty much, I mean, light kind of being the operative word. There may be one little heavier shower well down there along the, the coastal plain. And as you can see, everything is moving off to the kind of northeast. And we've got these few showers that are moving into town and a couple on the southeast side, obviously. A few more uh, up in portions of the hill country, again, just sort of uh, scattered around. And you may get a uh, quarter of an inch of rain, half an inch of rain, at best, that would be on the kind of upper end of the scale. Also off to the east later on this morning. Don't be surprised if there is a stray uh, clap of thunder here or there, but 
not really, uh, we're not looking at a whole lot of rain, unfortunately. Just a few of these scattered light showers may make the morning commute a little bit on the slow side as well. Partly cloudy skies later on today, mid 50s for high temperatures, so still jacket weather. Now we're going to warm up a little bit tomorrow, then another front's going to move on through here. It's not going to be too cool, just kind of keeping it sort of jacket weather. And there's going to be another one or two showers on Thursday. Again, unfortunately, I wouldn't get really excited about that rain chance. Then the weekend right now is setting up to be fantastic, kind of a prize winner. Cool mornings, warm afternoons, and plenty of sunshine. More on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos on this Monday morning. Are you seeing any rain out there yet? Not yet, but we're going to definitely keep a close eye on those trans guide cameras as well as the roadways. But it is a happy Monday, especially out on the roadways this early in the morning. 503 right now, not seeing a whole lot of problems out on the roadways. In fact, not seeing a whole lot of anything out there. There's I-10 at Crossroads. We also have 410 at Ingram North. People are getting moving this morning, but thankfully they're not going to encounter any big problems that would slow them down again at this hour. That can change, but we're going to keep an eye out for those trans guide cameras as well as the roads to see how that possible scattered showers could impact uh, the morning commute. But right now uh, we are taking a look at the map and it's pretty much green on the screen, but we want to bring you in to I-10 near 410 where there was a crash that was detected a little bit earlier this morning. Just talk to our friends over at trans guide. Good news that crash has thankfully cleared out, so it's not going to cause any problems for that early, early morning drive. And if your travels are taking you through San Antonio, you're in luck right now. I-10 coming in from Bernie in those eastbound lanes, 25 minutes at this hour, 281 southbound. If you're traveling from Bolverde, 26, and the same if you're traveling from New Braunfels on 35 southbound, 26 minutes. So again, we are starting this morning in some pretty good shape, some quiet roads as well. Stays this quiet. We're going to talk construction spots that's coming up in the next few moments. Mark. Jaffney. Stephen, thank you. Speaking of the roadways, new this morning, San Antonio police responded to a call from fire department officials overnight about a situation involving about 100 vehicles involved in street racing. When officers arrived on East South Cross and South WW White around 1030, they found just a vehicle blocking the road and found that another had got away via I-37. Police say so far no arrests were made. However, citations were given out and a couple vehicles were towed away. SAPD is continuing to investigate. Termination could be in the future for one Bear County Sheriff's deputy now facing a DWI charge. 27 year old Rolando Garza was arrested this weekend by SAPD. He's assigned to the Detention Bureau. BCSO officials say he'll be placed on administrative leave pending an investigation. Details of what led up to his arrest were not given. Garza's bond, it said, at $8,000. He has been with the department since 2017. San Antonio police are still looking for the person responsible for the deadly crash that killed a San Antonio motorcyclist early Sunday morning. The family of that man has identified him as 30 year old Mariano Lugo. San Antonio police say Lugo was on his way home, but as he drove through a green light, a Honda Accord ran a red light, causing Lugo to crash into the driver's side of the car. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. Police say the driver of the car ran off. I just don't know why they would just take off, you know, after happening what happened to him, you know, they, it's, it's just terrible. I'm hoping that their conscience, that they realize what they did. If caught, the suspect will face a charge of failure to stop and render aid, causing death. While the family hopes the suspect is found, Lugo's Motorcycle Club is holding a candlelight vigil in honor of him at the site of the crash Wednesday at 7 p.m. Right now it's 5.06. Now detentions in the standoff between Russia and the West over Ukraine. Yes, the State Department is now ordering family members of government employees at the U.S. Embassy in Kiev to leave the country amid growing concerns of a Russian invasion. ABC's M. Wen is tracking the latest in Washington. This morning, the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine on high alert. The State Department now ordering diplomats' families to leave the region while authorizing non-essential staffers to depart. The latest sign that American officials believe Russia could soon invade Ukraine. Secretary of State Antony Blinken reaffirming U.S. support for the Ukrainian government. If a single additional Russian force goes into Ukraine uh, in an aggressive way, uh, as I said, that would trigger uh, a swift, a severe, and a united response uh, from us uh, and from Europe. 
ABC News confirming the Biden administration is now considering sending more troops to the region. It would be on top of severe financial and trade sanctions against Russia, including the possible restriction of Russia's access to U.S. technology, in particular semiconductors that enable computer and smartphone technology, making it more difficult for everyday Russians to get consumer electronics. But officials stress no decisions have been made yet. In California this weekend, the U.S. military shipping out additional supplies to Ukraine following the administration's approval of $200 million in defensive security assistance. This comes as Russia has massed at least 100,000 troops near its border with Ukraine, prompting a bipartisan call for immediate action. Let's make sure that we are pushing back right now with stiff sanctions. But the very strongest sanctions, the sorts of sanctions that we use to bring Iran to the table, uh, is something that we should hold out as a a uh, deterrent uh, to prevent Putin from taking uh, the last step of invading Ukraine. The U.S. says there would be serious consequences after a new British intelligence report accused Russia of plotting to install a pro-Russian leader in Ukraine. Russia is dismissing the comments as disinformation. M1, ABC News, Washington. Monday morning time check, now 5.08, about 50 degrees. Still ahead, what Apple is saying about why some iPhone 13 users are sometimes seeing their screens turn that pinkish color you see there. And next, Riverwalk being drained. Once again, we'll tell you how long this maintenance will last. And now, taking another live look outside at your city. Oh, obviously, a beautiful view right there. People starting their Monday the right way. Stay with us. Welcome back. Just about 512 on your Monday morning to help ease demand for COVID-19 vaccines in rural areas. There's a mobile testing site opening in Seguin this week. That's right. It opens today and tomorrow at the Patricia K. Irvine King Pavilion. That's located on the River Drive East in Seguin. Testing will be available from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now you do not, not you do not have to show symptoms to get tested and there is no registration required. Keep in mind, this is a first come first serve basis, so be sure to plan ahead. For details on other testing locations throughout San Antonio and surrounding areas, head to KSAT.com. Here's the latest COVID numbers in Bear County. The latest update shows there are 3,893 new cases. That brings the seven day moving average to more than 5,000. Right now, 1,259 people are hospitalized. 263 are in ICU. 125 are on ventilators. It is a new year, which means it's time for the San Antonio River to be drained downtown for maintenance. Yes, the process started this past weekend and it's expected to last through next Sunday. City officials say the draining is vital to ensure the river stays clean from debris or items that have fallen in. And during this time, the Go Rio Cruises will not operate downtown or in the museum reach areas. And Alamo Street between Market and Commerce Streets will be closed to vehicles and pedestrians. Time right now, 513, still hovering right around 50 degrees. That's right, still ahead, how WhatsApp may soon let you transfer your chats from Android to iOS. And we'll tell you about some new sleep earbuds that allow you to experience complete silence. Kicking off breakfast with heart healthy Quaker Oats. Good call. Good call. Real good call. Breeze, pass the oats. Apples and cinnamon. Still got it, baby! Hey, wait for the bus! Unacceptable, boss! What'd I do? Illegal use of window! He gets FOMO. Fear of missing oats. Penalty reversed! The result of the play is... Breakfast. Quaker Oats, a super-trusted superfood. Always a good call. Before Nexium 24-hour, Anna could only imagine a comfortable night's sleep without frequent heartburn waking her up. Now, that dream is her reality. Nexium 24-hour stops acid before it starts for all-day, all-night protection. Can you imagine 24 hours without heartburn? Got my hair, got my head, got my brains, got my ears, got my heart. Apple iPhone 13 users are reporting a problem with their ski screens turning kind of a pink purple. ABC's Andrew Dembert has details in today's Tech Bytes. 
In today's Tech Bytes, Apple's pink screen problem. Some iPhone 13 users are reporting that the screen on their device randomly goes pink, making it impossible to use until it's restarted. Apple is advising users to back up their data and to make sure the latest software is updated. You may soon be able to transfer WhatsApp chats from Android to iOS. Reports say updates in both operating systems may allow the transfer via the Move to iOS app. And finally, a new version of the earbuds that pride itself on not giving you great sound. The Quiet On 3 Sleep earbuds will block out unwanted sounds so you can sleep in peace. It doesn't offer white noise like some similar products. The price tag, $269. Headphones that don't play any sound? I haven't heard any complaints. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Uh, I like Japanese thoughts on, on this kind of thing. Yeah, no, those earphones scare me because I need to hear right. if something bad is about to happen. You want to know about it. Yes, but let's go back to the iPhone thing. See, uh -huh. I got a, da a dinosaur phone. I don't have to worry about that. No, you so. don't. <laughs> Y'all well, got those technology problems. What version do you think that is? Don't ask me because okay. I wouldn't know. <laughs> okay. Now, speaking of Fair. colors, Steven, are we seeing green on our screen still? <laughs> <laughs> yes, green on the screen, and I'm totally with you, Jaffney. Those earbuds would not be great, especially if you are taking them out for a drive. Make sure you have both <laughs> ears open, and both hands on the wheel and both eyes on the road. Uh, let's take a closer look right now. US 90 at 36, uh, looking a little bit glossy there from on the roadways. Uh, we're spotting just a little bit of folks out there this morning. Just remember, take it slow out on the roads. It's not completely wet out there, but it does look a little wet out here off US 90 at 36. We're going to continue to watch this area closely, of course, give you all the updates as the morning does go on and be on the lookout because we do have a stall popping up here off I-37 northbound right at Loop 410. But as Jaffney pointed out, we're still seeing some green on the screen, so thankfully it's not causing any issues, but hopefully that driver does get some assistance pretty soon. We want to bring your attention up here to the northeast side because there is going to be some bridge work going on later today. It's going to start uh, today and wrap up on Friday, January 28th it's from 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. Now this bridge work has actually led to the northbound southbound frontage road turnaround to be closed at Pat Booker Road close to 1604. So again, be on the lookout for that. We could likely see a slowdown a little bit later this morning, but right now pushing you out of the map, pushing out of the map to take a wider look. We're still pretty much in good shape. Some some good news there. And as we take one last look here again, just remember to take it slow out on the roads. Guys, thank you, Stephen. Mike, I didn't see what roads on my in, uh, way in this morning, but do we have some perhaps what roads right now? Yeah, what uh, I was pointing over there, pointing down there, what Stephen was just showing, <laughs> and then over here, 410, over mm -hmm. there by the airport, looks like. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I see the rooster tails yeah, right there. there. Shine, yeah, and yep. a couple of rooster tails getting kicked up there, and that mist, so take it easy. And also, the other thing we got to watch out for, since this is really light rain, we haven't had any in a long time, uh, watch out because when you start to see this, you know, when it first happens, the light rain, it's not enough to wash all the oil and dirt off the road and everything. So this is when it's the usually the slipperiest out there and it's not really a heck of a lot, but uh, aerial coverage is filling in a little bit more, especially here in town. We've got these uh, few light showers and maybe even a an OK shower out there by the airport as of right now, kind of sliding on through the area. One down by Von Orme, perhaps a, a moderate shower, and that's going to be, I think, the exception rather than the rule. Most will be on the light side, just enough to make the roads damp, uh, maybe a little bit of free lawn watering, but when it's all said and done, it's not going to turn out to be a whole heck of a lot, unfortunately. Off to the east, especially later on today, a couple of more uh, spots where it's moderate and even uh, well, leaning toward the heavier side. And there could be actually be a couple of lightning strikes here and there, and then maybe a clap of thunder, one or two of them, especially off to the east. And that's going to be, again, the exception rather than the rule. And a few more showers out in portions of the hill country. So 56 yesterday with all those cloudy skies. And today we're not going to do much better, even though we will see some sunshine later on today. More more sunshine off the west, so it's going to be uh, low, mid and upper 60s, even some low 70s. But again, around the metropolitan area, just about mid and upper 50s today. So jacket's going to be a pretty good idea. And as far as the rain, right on schedule, moved in overnight, and then it's going to continue to work its way on out of here by probably about mid late morning, even noon time. Then the clouds are going to hang in here a little bit more on the, the stubborn side. Another, as we call them, Alberta Clipper coming in there out of the Prairie Provinces of Canada working its way through the Great Lakes. All this, though, is going to be staying pretty much up to the north of us, as will that brutally cold air. Once again, down to 13 below up there in International Falls. Wind chill is roughly 30 below zero up there. We are going to be staying cool 
overall this week, but not bone chilling cold. So this front that's moving on through, we've got another one coming through tomorrow night into Wednesday is not going to be just a huge blast of cold air. Again, it's just going to keep us in jacket weather. A few showers around this morning. Those will continue to clear on out of here. We'll have more sunshine tomorrow and Depending on what clouds do tonight, I'm going for mostly clear skies, and that's going to set us up for potentially fog tomorrow morning. But if we get a few more clouds hanging around here, that would help to prevent some fog. But then the clouds around on Wednesday. Got another front that's going to come through late Thursday. This, I think, kind of overdoes it a little bit with rain chances early Friday morning. Um, I don't think it's going to be that great. And then uh, that's going to set us up, though, for a fantastic weekend. 52 degrees, partly cloudy skies. I'm being a little optimistic as far as the clouds breaking up by early afternoon and later on this afternoon, but again, only 55 for a high temperature. We've got the showers around this morning and then tomorrow. Nice looking day. Start off at 40, make it up to 65 front comes through here tomorrow night. Also, by the way, tomorrow got to watch out for some patchy fog in the morning, then mid 50s, low to mid 50s to finish up the week. Warm up by the weekend. A couple of showers, maybe late Thursday, early Friday, but the weekend looks great. Hi, Mike. Thank you very much. 523 on your Monday morning. We're about 50 degrees. Still ahead in your morning spotlight, Encanto tops the music charts and how actress Kirsten Dunst is preparing for Civil War. Just about 526, Disney's latest animated movie fell out of the box office top 10 weeks ago, but its soundtrack is still climbing the charts. Yeah, CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. No clouds for the Encanto soundtrack, which has returned to the top spot on the Billboard 200 album chart. The song We Don't Talk About Bruno has risen to number four on Billboard's Hot 100, the highest ranking for a song from a Disney animated film in more than 25 years. The day will always hold a special place in my heart. Kirsten Dunst is headed into the future. The SAG Award nominee for The Power of the Dog is set to star in writer-director Alex Garland's Civil War, described as an action epic set in a near future America. No word on further plot details or a filming start date. My cruel love has never stopped growing in my soul. From the day it was born there. From the day it was born. There. There. Here's your first look at the famous balcony scene in Cyrano with Peter Dinklage, Kelvin Harrison Jr. and Haley Bennett. The latest film adaptation of Edmund Rostand's legendary play arrives in theaters February 25th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. My love for you is so powerful. Time now, 527, 50 degrees outside. Still ahead on GMSA. What happens next now that U.S. officials have warned a Russian invasion of Ukraine could be imminent? Plus, what parents need to know about this year's tax season as the IRS starts accepting federal returns today. And why those traditional conversation hearts Valentine's candies are about to get a little bit more encouraging. A community comes together in support of a small child battling cancer coming up on GMSA. We'll share with you a story of how a livestock show broke the rules for a good cause. Making headlines this morning, how the Biden administration is reacting following reports that a Russian invasion of Ukraine could happen at any moment. It sounds like quite a drag. A street race has several people in trouble with the law. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. And we're taking a live look outside with live cam on your Monday morning. Everything looking pretty smooth right now. Great day to start up your week. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is January 24th. Up and at them. Let's go to Mike. Thank you very much. And uh, we got a little bit of rain around the area this morning. Roads, as you can see, are damp over there. 410 over by the airport. And uh, temperature right now, it's not too cold. But, you know, with that dampness out there, kind of a, a damp cool. 50 degrees. The dew point humidity is still the fair, relatively low. And wind out of the uh, east-southeast right now. So here's what it looks like right on schedule. Some of these showers uh, started to develop late last night. And they're working their way on through the area. Most of it, as you can see, is on the light side. A couple of more uh, maybe a moderate shower here or there and even coming through town right there just about to cross 90 maybe a little bit of a 
a heavier shower, if you will. Most of it, though, is light enough, and since it's just started, it doesn't really wash all the, the dirt and oil and everything off the road, so roads are going to be slippery this morning. Out in the hill country, a little bit still around, uh, say, Bandera, over toward Bernie, Sisterdale, and then more down to the southeast. A lot of this is going to be out here. It's going to be sticking around throughout most of the morning commute and then moving on out, but then the clouds are probably going to be fairly stubborn and behind that. Both Molten Mountain Cedar went down in yesterday's reading and uh, 52 degrees today at noon. Being a little optimistic, I think, about the uh, the amount of sunshine by noon. Like I said, the clouds are going to be on the, the stubborn side and then we make it up to 55, so we'll still be on the cool side later on today with more sunshine late in the day and especially out to the west. Tomorrow's going to be probably the warmest day of uh, the work week. Then another front's going to move on through here. How cold will it get in behind that? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Vasos, I'm seeing what looks like double trouble out there on 35. Yeah, you know, it's pretty dark out there and those flashing lights are obviously indicating a big serious incident that just happened a few moments ago. Now we're taking a look here up at 35 at Kohlenberg. Now this is up toward New Braunfels, a little bit past it actually. So we're seeing that traffic is moving through there pretty slowly right now. It's very dark right now at this, uh, as you can tell, based off this trans guide camera shot, but it does look like there is a pretty serious crash. It is causing quite the buildup of traffic out in that area. We do know a few lanes are blocked right now and traffic is actually trying to navigate around these first responders. You have to make sure that you move over or slowing down because it is very dark and it's unclear exactly what we're looking at, but it is definitely causing issues as you can see here in those northbound lanes where we're starting to see that stretch of red, which is indicating a slowdown out toward New Braunfels. So again, a crash that we're going to watch very closely in the morning. If you're heading up toward Austin or maybe San Marcos a little bit later today, we'll see how that impacts that morning drive. But we push out of the map. The good news is further here in town, we're still in good shape. Not seeing any slowdowns on 410 or 1604, any of the main highways in here uh, in San Antonio, but we're going to continue to watch that area up in New Brussels closely. Thankfully, if you're traveling in, still green across the board. No slowdowns just yet from any of these neighboring communities. But again, this is going to be the serious incident right now. They're off 35 at Kohlenberg. We'll give you all those updates as the morning goes on. Guys. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, a street race has some people on a road to trouble with the law. They're facing fines. San Antonio police were called to break up the race, which they say involved dozens of cars. It happened at the intersection of East South Cross and WW White. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. So Katrina, tell us, did police make any arrests in this case? No, no arrests, only citations, but it seems that there are some cars in lockup Police had those towed away. Now they say most of the cars and people had already taken off by the time officers showed up here after 1030 last night. The fire department phoned this in to police after noticing about 100 vehicles blocking this intersection at East South Cross and West and WW White. Rather, police say when they got here, almost everyone had scrambled. They found only one car still blocking the intersection. They ended up towing a truck and car and issuing those citations to the people who were still here. Now, police have told us in the past that street racing has been an ongoing problem that has led to deaths and injuries. This time, there were no injuries reported. Reporting live on the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Will Russia further invade Ukraine? U.S. officials say it could happen at any time. And as CNN's Britt Conway reports, they're getting ready on multiple fronts. The world is watching and waiting as more than 127,000 Russian troops mass at the Ukrainian border. U.S. officials have warned invasion could be imminent. In the meantime, the U.S. has been sending weapons to Ukraine and getting some Americans out of Ukraine. The State Department is reducing staff levels at the U.S. Embassy there. Certain wires have been tripped because all embassies abroad have a plan that lays out precisely what it is that has to happen before these evacuations occur. Now, the assessment has come in that more things have happened, we're not exactly sure what those are yet, uh, that have caused the State Department to say, yeah, families need to get out. Senior officials familiar with the discussion say President Joe Biden is also working on a global strategy to increase liquefied natural gas production in the event an invasion leads to shortages in Europe, which relies on Russia for nearly half of its supply. A senior official said Biden also met with top military leaders to talk about options for bolstering U.S. troop levels in the Baltics and Eastern Europe. 
during which the White House says President Biden again affirmed that should Russia further invade Ukraine, the U.S. will impose swift and severe consequences on Russia with our allies and partners. What happens next, though, depends on what Russian President Vladimir Putin is planning. It's going to be all part of, a, of I think, a complex um, sort of analysis that he's probably doing, trying to decide, do I do this? And if so, how and when? I'm Britt Conway reporting. Former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin's defamation lawsuit against the New York Times goes to trial today. Jury selection starts this morning in Manhattan. What could be a landmark test of the First Amendment? Palin, a former presidential vice presidential candidate, sued the paper in 2017 over an editorial in the Times that was later admitted was incorrect. The Times implied that Palin's political action committee had somehow inspired the shooting of, cons of Representative Gabby Giffords in 2011. The paper corrected the error and apologized for it. And while a judge initially dismissed the case, a federal appeals court revived it. The trial is expected to take two weeks, and Palin's attorneys haven't said when or if Palin will appear in court herself. Space fans, listen up. SpaceX's unnamed Dragon cargo ship successfully undocked from the International Space Station Sunday. SpaceX says the departure was successful after a previously scheduled attempt was postponed due to bad weather and its splashdown location off the Florida coast. This ship is now making its return to Earth and is bringing back medical supplies along with more than 4,900 pounds of cargo and research. Dragon is expected to splash down off the coast of Panama City, Florida later this afternoon. Afternoon. The experiments on board will then be transported to the NASA Space Station processing facility at the Kennedy Space Center. Well, back here at home, we know when San Antonio prepares for a big weather event, there's a lot of preparation that goes into it and a lot of decision making along the way. That is why Maria Villa Gomez, the deputy city manager, joined leading essay this weekend. Max Massey has the recap. Yes, Maria Villagomez joined us. We discussed a lot. Obviously, as we saw colder temps this past week, everyone in and around San Antonio seemed a little more on edge, especially after last year's February freeze. So that was one of the main topics we discussed. You know, what did the city, what did local leaders learn from last year, and how can we move forward to make sure we are as prepared as possible? Well, we learned a lot. You know, one of the, the areas that uh, we focused on was communication. And uh, not just communication internally within the city, but also with the utilities. And most importantly, the communication to our community. I think from a resident's perspective, when there's a weather event like the one we had in February of last year, or the event that we had last week, they expect to see um, a united front with the city, the utilities, the county and other agencies that respond to an emergency like that. We also discussed the collaboration between city leaders and local entities, entities like CPS and SAWS, and what decision making goes into play before things are closed or gets postponed. You can find our full conversation right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Guys, back to you. Time now, 539, 50 degrees outside. Still ahead, how San Antonio has become a latest player in the realm of esports. And next, why traditional Valentine's candy will have a few more things to say this year. Outside with live cam right now, waiting for the sun to come up on your Monday morning. Nowhere near as cold this morning. That's a good thing. We do have quite a few clouds over the Alamo City. Mike's going to get us up to speed coming up, and we'll check back out on that incident way up there on the I-35 at Kohlerberg with Stephen coming up. In your morning consumer headlines, tax season starts today. January 24th is the first official date the IRS will accept and process tax returns. This year, parents are advised to keep a special eye out for an IRS mailing known as Letter 6419. The letter pertains to 2021's advanced child tax credit, which was paid out from July through December. Families received up to $300 for each kid ages 5 and up and $250 for children between 6 and 17. Letter 64 419 will help parents accurately report the amount of money they received up front in 2021. If parents did not receive one or more child tax credit payments, they are encouraged to call the IRS. 
A classic Valentine's candy is getting some new sweet sayings for your Valentine's Day gift giving enjoyment this year. You'll find 16 new sayings on the candy conversation hearts. Little words of encouragement, everything from you got this and high five to crush it and you the best. <laughs> Don't worry, the classic <laughs> sayings haven't gone anywhere. You can still ask someone to be mine in sugar form. Aww. That candy used to taste so good in school when you were hungry. You remember they mm -hmm. used to hand out the little Valentine candy Oh, packets? I do. Yeah, I remember that. that. That was Just... the only time I ate them, but <laughs> they were really tasty. Same here. 544, <laughs> about 50 degrees. Up next, why eSports is slowly but surely becoming a big deal for colleges and universities in San Antonio. Five forty-six. New episode of KSAT Explains out tomorrow night. This week's episode is all about esports. If you have any questions about the relatively new industry or why you should care, be sure to tune in. Here's Myra Arthur with a preview. Playing video games is something that most people consider just a pastime, a hobby. <laughs> or even unproductive. Personally, when I was young, my parents didn't like me playing video games. And like, I told my parents, you know, this could get me somewhere. That somewhere could turn out to be lucrative. The realm of esports is still new, but the top players are already getting big name endorsements and even bigger cash prizes. High schools are launching esports programs. Universities are beginning to offer scholarships. In the last 10 years, you know, we went from pretty much no scholarships, no space, no internships, no jobs. Now there's, you know, scholarship money up for grabs, there's cash prizes up for grabs, and that's, that's a pretty big incentive. And companies are actively scouting esports athletes for jobs in the tech field. If you look at our aerospace customers, robotics, cybersecurity, even the military missions, they are all looking at esports and gaming as a new area to find, recruit, retain talent. San Antonio is part of this new trend. In this episode of KSAT Explains, we're taking a look at what San Antonio is doing to become a player in this new arena, plus the potential benefits of esports to student athletes, the professional players, and the city itself. I Monday wonder, morning, 548. Would Mario Kart be considered eSports? Because I'd be pretty dope at it. I'm yeah. Yoshi. I could do the sound and everything. Yoshi! <laughs> nice. <laughs> hidden, <laughs> hidden talents, we all have them. Yeah. Now, speaking of Mario Kart, roadways, Steven, hook us up. <laughs> no racing through here, guys. This is a, unfortunately, this is a pretty big scene that is going to definitely cause some delays there for you. 35 at Kohlenberg. We showed you this a little bit earlier in the newscast. Now you can see uh, we do have plenty of flashing lights out there. What I'm noticing from this trans guide camera, it does look like only the left lane is getting by on the highway there. Uh, we have plenty of first responders again out there working to clear a crash scene. Came in a little bit earlier, and I'm also looking on the access road. It does look like we may have a stalled vehicle out there as well. Unsure if these incidents are related, but it is definitely causing problems for our drivers heading up north of New Braunfels. Let's take you to the map because we are seeing that red starting to build there in those northbound lanes of 35 where that crash has been reported. So uh, Texan already has those trans guide camera sign or the trans guide digital signs, pardon me, that do let uh, drivers know of the crash that is ahead. So be prepared for a slowdown because it's unclear how long it's going to take to clear this out. Let's take you back into town because we do see that it's still pretty much in good shape, but another place that I've spotted a slowdown during the morning is right over here off 37. Now there is some construction that's going on there that's actually led to some pretty big uh, slowdowns a little bit later in the morning. Now it started on January 17th, but we still have a few days to go. That'll be wrapping January 28th. The road work that's going on there will take place from 7 in the morning to 7 in the evening. It's out towards Commerce Street and keep in mind southbound and the northbound turnaround is going to be closed while that is going on. So again, that's another slowdown that you can expect a little bit later on this morning morning, but right now at this hour, you can expect a big slowdown there off 35 at Kohlenberg. We're going to continue to give you those updates as the morning does go on. Guys. All right, Stephen, thank you very much. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Yeah, uh, maybe that's caused by some of the wet roads out there because we do have a couple of uh, light little showers and again, it's light rain, so it's not really doing a good job washing all the, the junk off the road, all the, the dust and oil and everything. And as you can see over there by the airport, the uh, shine of the headlights on the street and maybe a little bit of mist being kicked up there, but it hasn't really been a heck of a lot and it's the aerial coverage is pretty good, but obviously the rain is very broken up down by Victoria. A couple of uh, 
well, heavier showers there also by Beeville, maybe one or two, you know, OK showers kind of mixed in. But again, the majority of this is definitely on the uh, the light side. A little bit more up there just to the north of 1604 heading up of I-10 and then in and around town on the north half, northern half of town. We still have a couple of these showers and there'll be a few more kind of scooting on through here as the morning rolls on and again, going down by three rivers, Beeville, perhaps. Uh, and don't even be surprised if there's a, a clap of thunder down there, but that's going to be again the exception rather than the rule. Same thing out there in portions of the hill country. I think we keep the scattered showers around throughout most of the morning commute and then by say nine o'clock or so, most of that rain is going to be on out of here and then clouds may be sort of stubborn. I'm being optimistic about some uh, breaks in clouds by the first part of the afternoon and then more later on in the afternoon, especially out to the west. So we're at 50 right now. Very mild 54 Stinson and some mid 40s in portions of the hill country. So good news with this. Obviously, there's nothing anywhere near freezing around here. And as far as the humidity, yes, it is. It's there. Obviously, these numbers are still below 60 dew point temperatures, so it's not humid when you step outside. The one thing that we're going to have to watch out for is if skies do clear out tonight and stay clear overnight with these dew points still up here. We could see a little bit of patchy fog around tomorrow. Then we'll get a bit of a roller coaster action in here with some drier air in behind a front late tomorrow night, Wednesday. Slight return with that, and then we dry back out. And as of right now, we're getting set up for a fantastic looking weekend around here. Here. Here's long range computer model and now again, this is the one that broad brushes things showers hanging around here through about mid morning or so those begin to clear on out. And then we go into uh, tomorrow, a lot of sunshine. Wednesday, more clouds around here. And as well on Thursday, Thursday night into Friday. And I think this kind of overdoes things again broad brush, but a couple of showers hanging around here early Friday. Then we're going to be clearing out quite nicely as we go on in toward the, uh, the weekend. So a couple of rain chances, but it's more unfortunately nuisance rain than overly beneficial rain. 52 degrees today at noon. I'm being optimistic with partly cloudy skies. Keep my fingers crossed for that one, but we'll still have a lot of stubborn clouds, especially off to the east, more clearing to the west. 55 for high temperature today, so still jacket weather. Tomorrow we make it up to 65 degrees, and that's mm, going to be the warmest day of the work week. Then back to the 50s to finish things out. A couple of showers later on Thursday, and then the weekend's setting up some real nice with plenty of sunshine around here. Okay, so not bad. Some, so make some weekend plans. Last weekend of January already. Make some weekend plans. Yeah, in between AFC, NFC championship games. Those aren't till Sunday, though, right? I think they're both on Sunday now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're down to yeah, that point. Yeah, we have two games this weekend. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, who thank you, you Mike. Who are you picking? Anybody? Oh, who am I picking? Let's see here. Well, gosh, it was such an amazing weekend. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'm, I'm rooting for the, the former Lions boys, so I'm rooting for Stafford. Yeah, maybe uh, Bengals-Rams for the Super Bowl this year. Okay, it'd be nice to see it. Fresh face in there. Let's see. What do you think? Whoever wins, okay. that's my team. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Well, right now we got 554. Still a cool 50 degrees outside. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three this morning. We've got pick three, 348, Fireball uh, Zero. Daily four number 7918, Fireball Two. And Cash Five, 210, 15, 19, 21. We've got the Texas Lotto, 1625, 33, 45, 46, and 49. And then the Powerball, 8, 14, 33, 36, 67, with the Powerball being 17, Power Play, 2. Good morning. Coming up here on a Monday edition of GMA, we start with the escalating tensions in Russia. The U.S. now ordering some Americans to leave Ukraine, fearing an invasion, while President Biden is considering sending U.S. troops to the region. We'll get that and more right here on Good Morning America. Still had a local community rally together for a young girl battling cancer. And scary moments at a popular tourist area downtown. The latest on a shooting outside River Center Mall coming up after the break. And Transguide right now. Our biggest problem is way up I-35 at Kohlenberg right now. We uh, appear to have a little bit more traffic flowing through that area. Flashing lights just went off. But we'll see what's up with Stephen Cavazos coming up. Hope you had a great weekend. It was really chilly on Saturday, a little warmer yesterday. It looks like that trend is continuing this morning, but when's the next front going to be here? And Mike will get us updated on some showers we've had in the overnight hours. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts 
right now. Good morning. It is Monday. It is January 24th. And look who is here on GMSA. That would be Miss Japhne Gray. Good to yes, see you, Jeff. I was happy to be here and for the one and only beautiful Stephanie. So I hope I do it justice today. Yeah, be patient with me. You have and you will. <laughs> Six o'clock. Let's go straight to Mike. Get an update. We have seen some showers. I was telling you guys earlier, I didn't see anything. Do you see any wetness on the roads coming not, in? But it felt really good outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not, not too bad. By the way, Stephanie, I think I uh, saw some pictures, did another marathon yesterday. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, she said she finished under two hours for the first time nice. in her running career for I'm a marathon up in that, Austin. That See, half, uh, half marathon she did under two? Fantastic. She will always be hashtag goals for me. No kid. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Uh, all right, back to the rain. Yes, there is a little bit of rain out there. And as you can see, I didn't see anything like we were talking about coming into work, but then it started to move on in here. So we do have wet roads over there by the airport, 410. Temperatures, like uh, Jaffney was saying, it's not bad at all. Light jacket weather, rain jacket, obviously, and right around 50 degrees, give or take, all around the metropolitan area right now. Here's some of the uh, light showers. And uh, as you can see, it's covering... Well, pretty much along uh, 10 out in the hill country, 37 and east of there, a couple of scattered ones in behind. Coverage wise, yeah, it's covering a good chunk of the area, but of course, very, very broken up. And there are just a few spots where there may be a little heavier downpour, but most of this is just on the light side. So it's the kind of stuff that makes things nice and slippery is because it doesn't do a really good job washing all the oil and dirt and everything off the road. So obviously take it easy and even up over by or up by Sister Dale, I should say a couple of decent showers here and there going up to 81 and then down to the uh, southeast. Don't be surprised if you hear a clap of thunder, especially off to the east later on today, but that's going to be once again the exception rather than the rule. Mold Mountain Cedar yesterday both really dropped off and throughout the rest of today temperatures um, they may fluctuate a couple of degrees, but we got this cloud cover out there and the rain's going to help to hold things kind of steady going for 48 degrees here in town in the next uh, hour or so. And then it's not going to be a huge warm up throughout the day. Clouds are going to be pretty stubborn. Rain's going to be sticking around through most of the morning commute and then starting to taper off from west to east. And then clouds will begin to break up from west to east. I'm being kind of optimistic as far as later on today with more sunshine out there and then 55 degrees for a high temperature today. So definitely on the cool side tomorrow we warm up, then another front comes through. Is it going to be like the last front we had? Details on that and look ahead to the weekend coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso still got that big problem up in the northeast. Well, if you are traveling up towards 35 and New Brussels, we have some good news. You are in the clear. Now, first, we want to start with a look around town to see how things are shaping up. A trans guide shot does show that traffic is moving up there off 35 at Kohlenberg, where we had that big crash that was reported a little bit earlier. But right now, I-10 at Probant, we can see traffic moving here in town. There's 35, the upper level at Brooklyn, nice and slow on the road. So it's a great start to this Monday morning. But keep in mind, although that crash is cleared up towards 35, we are still seeing a slowdown. Check out our map right now. Those northbound lanes haven't really improved much. But one of the good things is we are seeing traffic that is moving through that area pretty freely. So it'll just take a few moments before we start to see those lanes improve. But right now, Still expect a slowdown out there out there towards 35 uh, and northbound at Kohlenberg up toward New Braunfels. So again, keep that in mind. Let's take a push out of the map as we take a wider look. It does still show that we are in good shape. We're still seeing a lot of green lanes out on the screen, so that does mean it's open for you. But make sure that you take it slow out on the roads. And right now, if you are going to be traveling to San Antonio, we have those inbound times for you right now, especially if you're going to be traveling on 37 northbound right there from Pleasanton. Still a pleasant drive with 28 minutes at this hour. Highway 9. And eastbound lanes coming in from Castroville, just 18 minutes, 16 minutes if you're coming in from 35 and Lyle. So a little time there. We're still in good shape if you're going to be traveling. Right now, we're going to watch that slowdown off towards 35 and New Braunfels. But right now, things have been looking a lot better than what we saw last time, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Top stories this morning. A Bear County Sheriff's deputy could be terminated after being charged with driving while intoxicated. 27 year old Rolando Garza was arrested yesterday morning by San Antonio police. He is assigned to the detention bureau. BCSO officials say he'll be placed on administrative leave pending an investigation. Details of what led up to his arrest were not given. Garza's bond is set at $8,000. He's been with the department since 2017. 
A man in custody for allegedly shooting in the middle of the street near River Center Mall yesterday evening. San Antonio police say it started with an argument between two women just before 8 p.m. on Commerce Street. At some point, the two women and one of their boyfriends moved locations near the Denny's in front of the Marriott Hotel. That's where police say that the boyfriend allegedly started firing shots. No one was hit, but police found several sh shell casings in that area and recovered the weapon. After a brief search, police were able to locate the man and take him into custody on previous warrants. In your morning headlines, State Department ordering the families of all American personnel at the U.S. Embassy in Kiev to leave the country, allowing non-essential staff to leave Ukraine. This comes as fears of a Russian invasion of Ukraine increase, despite talks between U.S. and Russian officials. The State Department stresses the Kiev Embassy will remain open and that this is not an evacuation. At the same time, officials are warning all Americans against travel to Ukraine as Russia as well because of tensions between the two countries. Opening statements begin today in the federal trial of four, uh, three rather, former Minneapolis police officers charged with violating George Floyd's civil rights. All three re men remain charged for failing to provide Floyd with medical care and two of the former officers are facing an additional count for failing to stop Derek Chauvin, who was convicted of murder and manslaughter in state court last year. Legal experts say prosecutors must prove the three officers willfully violated Floyd's constitutional rights. Tax season is kicking off and the IRS will begin accepting personal tax returns beginning today. But it could end up being a bigger headache than usual, according to the Associated Press. There are a variety of issues at play that could slow things down, such as worker shortage, a heavy workload from administering pandemic related programs and stalled legislation that would have given the IRS more money to help process returns faster. Plus, IRS is still working through some of last year's tax returns Now, to help get your return as quickly as possible this year. The IRS recommends filing electronically if you do that and choose to get your refund via direct deposit and there's no issues with your return. The IRS expects you'll get your refund within three weeks, but there are some other things to watch out for when filing for 2021. If you got advance payments on the child tax credit this past year, your tax refund may be smaller than previous years. You'll also still need to file a tax return to get the other half of the credit. Now you can check how much you've already received through the IRS website. And if you were eligible to get the latest stimulus check but didn't, you may be able to claim a recovery rebate credit on your return. Again, you can check out if you're eligible for that through the IRS website. And as of now, the deadline to file your taxes is April 18th. In other news this morning, the city working to clear debris from the San Antonio River this week downtown. Portions of the river walk will be drained for maintenance. The heart of the river walk, including the river loop near River Center Mall, will be completely drained. And the main channel from East Josephine to East Nueva will be partially drained. This will also affects some traffic. Alamo Street between Market and Commerce will be closed as crews use a crane to help remove debris from the river. The work is expected to last through Sunday. Time now, 608, 50 degrees outside. Glad you're with us. Still ahead on GMSA, highlights of last night's game between the Spurs and the Philadelphia 76ers. And if you're trying to pay off some credit card debt, we have some tips to help you do that in a smart way. Let's go outside with live cam. Do you need an umbrella all day today or maybe just part of it? Mike will tell you. Coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. And Trans Guy looking out. Traffic's moving smoothly. We'll keep up with our Stephen Cavasso is coming up. Please stay with us. And welcome back. More than a third of Americans added personal debt this past holiday season. A lot of it on credit cards. Now, if you got credit card debt you need to pay off, there are smart ways to do it. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the story. Credit card holders owe on average more than $5,000 in debt on their cards. And with the holiday bills now coming due, it can be hard to manage that debt. Experts say there are different strategies for paying down your credit card balances. One is called the debt avalanche method. The idea is that you attack the card that has the highest interest rate on it. Pay minimums on all of your cards, but put more towards this card with the highest interest rate because, again, it is your most expensive debt. 
Another way is to use the debt snowball method. With debt snowball, it's all about baby steps, starting with the smallest balance first. Why? Because in theory, this should be something relatively easy to overcome. You can also lower your payments by transferring your balances to a card that charges no interest for a period of time, typically 12 to 15 months. Now, the caveat to this is that if you exceed 15 months and you have still a balance on that balance transfer card, the interest rate will increase, in some cases very high, and you'll be back to where you were a little bit over a year ago, and you're going to have to pay interest again. Another option is to consider a personal loan with an interest rate lower than your cards. But no matter how you tackle your credit card debt, experts say you should always have a spending plan. You can't get out of debt if you don't have a budget. These two things go hand in hand. So while you're thinking about reducing your debt load, you also want to be mindful of how you're spending and making sure that that is aligned with your debt payoff goals. Morgan Norwood, ABC News. We are approaching 6.15 on your Monday morning. Let's get an update on the traffic situation with Stephen. Things are moving right now, Mark and Jeff. As we take a look right now, 35 in Nogalitos, we see a lot more people out there this morning. San Antonio is up in Adam, but right now you're not going to encounter big issues out there. Of course, we know that the morning has not gone without any issues. We do want to go ahead and bring your attention up here to 35, where we had a crash off of up toward New Braunfels. And now this has led to a slowdown that we are seeing now quickly improving off I-35 northbound Again, right at Kohlenberg, you can see traffic now moving at 64 miles per hour, according to our map. So that's some good news and some progress for our friends that have to travel north. So something we'll watch closely, but I'm assuming it's going to be wrapping up pretty quickly here. Let's take a jump right over here because we do have some construction that is also leading to some slowdowns a little bit later on this morning. Some bridge repairs, actually, that's going to be starting today, January 24th, and we expect that to wrap up on January 27th. Now, this will lead to a single southbound main lane closure at Southwest Military Drive. And again, during that time, we'll likely start to see a slowdown. So again, if you have to travel through there, maybe a little bit later on, make sure that you are prepared for a possible slowdown. Taking a jump down over here, we have a minor saw off Loop 410 eastbound at Villa Main Road, not causing any issues in those eastbound lanes because it is still very early on this morning. But the wider look at the map does show, although we are seeing more people out there, the, the morning is still in good shape. Just make sure to drive carefully. There's 35 at Alamo, still seeing some uh, wet spots out there as well. So make sure you also take it slow guys. Thank you, Stephen. Jaffe, did you know Mike possesses some magical powers? Ooh, what are <laughs> they? He can conjure a school bus out of thin oh, air. Yes. What? Indeed. Have you ever seen this before? No, I haven't. Go ahead and drop it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a magic word. Please. Abracadabra. Yeah, I like that. Abracadabra. Hey, there we go. And there the magic is. school bus. bus. Uh, we have a couple of uh, scattered showers around the area this morning and uh, 48 degrees. So not cold, cold, but chilly enough. And even with some of this rain out there, it's that sort of damp chill. And then only 55 for a high temperature later on today. Same as where we were yesterday. We'll have a little more sunshine, especially off to the west later on today. And then we'll see more sunshine going into uh, tomorrow. Here's a live look with live cam. And yep, out there, 410 by the airport, roads are definitely on the, uh, the damp side. And we've got some of these light showers. And the majority of the rain, obviously, is kind of in the northeastern half of our area. And even a few more moderate uh, showers down there to the southeast. A couple of them right down here, just on the uh, near south side of town. And everything is sort of sliding off to the, again, east, northeastward. Just a few light little showers. And that's going to be the case throughout the rest of the morning with even these uh, couple of, you know, scattered light showers hours here and there off and on. So just allow yourself a little extra time and then more rain off to these may see um, half an inch, perhaps even with some of these uh, moderate showers, a little bit more than that. But this is not unfortunately going to be a real big, big rain event. More of it's kind of on the nuisance rain side. Unfortunately, a couple of more uh, well, decent showers up there just to the north of Sisterdale heading in toward Fredericksburg. So temperatures again are on the mild side. We here in town are almost 10 degrees above normal mid 40s portions of the hill country and the humidity dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere kind of on the high side right now. And it's also going to be staying relative to the temperature on the high side. And if we clear out a lot tonight, we could see some uh, scattered fog tomorrow morning, then more sunshine in the afternoon. We get a front moving on through here. 
It's not going to be a huge, not like last week's front. It's not going to be that big, huge blast of cold air, nor the uh, strong winds that we had, but it will get rid of some of the humidity, knock temperatures down somewhat for the mid to latter portion of the week. And then we'll kind of come back up with temperatures by the weekend, but we'll have some very dry air around here once again. Again, here's long term uh, computer model. It's got most of the rain getting on out of here. And again, this tends to paint things in with sort of a broad brush, but it's got the rain moving on out of here. Um, I think even by say mid morning, most of it's going to be gone and well off to the east. Then we'll see some clearing off to the, uh, the west later on today. Plenty of sunshine tomorrow. More clouds on Wednesday and not much as the front moves on through here, but then we get a little disturbance coming through Thursday into Friday. So that chance of rain early on Friday, that'll move on out of here. And that, like I said, sets us up for really, really nice looking weekend. So the forecast today, 52 at noon. Again, I'm being optimistic with the uh, calling it partly cloudy skies today and it will again out to the west more sunshine things clear on out clouds will from west to east 55 for high temperature later on today tomorrow then we're gonna have to watch out for some fog in the morning down to 40 so still cool and pretty much a jacket all week long maybe not tomorrow afternoon nor by the weekend but uh yeah, during the latter half of the week couple of showers late thursday early friday and then we clear on out Cool mornings, warm afternoons for the uh, the weekend coming up. Here. I, I wish we could squeeze out a little more rain today before all is said and done. You know what I mean, Mike? Yeah, but it's just not in the cards. Long range computer models have another chance of rain by kind of the mid to latter part of next week. But that's been the case for the past few weeks where, you know, it looks good way down the road. And then when reality gets here, it's not. So still that that El Nino year. Kind of, true. Side, kind of on the warm side, kind of on the dry side. Fortunately, we're not dealing with like super cold temperatures, though. No, no, it's yeah. not going to be brutally cold with not, this rain. So not bad for late January. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Mike, thank you. Right now it's 619, about 50 degrees. Coming up next, a look at your morning sports. The Spurs taking another tough loss in some wild NFL playoff games this weekend. We'll have it all after the break. You won't phase me. Unlike Zyrtec, Allegra won't make me drowsy. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. So take Allegra before allergy symptoms take over you. And for kids, try allergist recommended non drowsy children's Allegra. Introducing the all new Gillette Labs with Exfoliating Bar. It combines shaving and gentle exfoliation into one efficient stroke for a shave as quick and easy as washing your face. Black psoriasis, the burning, itching, the pain. Emerge Tremfiant. With Tremphia, adults with moderate to severe black psoriasis can uncover clearer skin and improve symptoms at 16 weeks. Serious allergic reactions may occur. Tremphia may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Emerge Tremfiant with Tremphia. Ask your doctor about Tremphia today. In this morning's GMA First Look, a mystery that started with a dating app and ended with the unexpected death of 23-year-old Lauren Smith Fields. Her family calling for answers about how she died last month. Bridgeport, Connecticut police say a man who said he met Lauren on a dating app three days prior called 911. According to the report, he told police they fell asleep. But when he woke up later that morning, he says she had blood on her nose and wasn't breathing. I just could not believe that my little my baby sister was gone. Lauren's family now claiming police refused to view the last person to see Smith Fields before she died as a person of interest. And we'll have more on this developing mystery coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. All right, folks, another tough loss for our Spurs as they closed out their seven-game homestand last night against the 76ers. Coming off back-to-back -back triple doubles, DeJounte Murray gives the Spurs an early 5-2 lead with a jump shot. Then later in the quarter, uh, Lonnie Walker drives through the defense and banks in the layup. Spurs keeping pace with Philly, but they trail 29-23 after one. Sixers start to pull away in the second quarter. Spurs down at the half, 59-47. 
Spurs try to claw their way back in the third. Fast forward to the fourth, just under a minute to play. Derek White forces a turnover. DeJounte Murray picks up the loose ball, takes it to the distance. Spurs down by two with 33 seconds left. But a foul for the Sixers on the next play would finish the game. Spurs lose. 115-109. So here's a look at the Spurs schedule for the week, and it's a very busy one. They head to Houston for a game on Tuesday, then back home for a game on Wednesday and Friday against the Grizzlies and Bulls, and then head to Phoenix this weekend to play the Suns on Sunday night. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The divisional round of the NFL playoffs wrapping up yesterday with two great games. Rams knocking off Tom Brady and the Bucks 30 to 27. Chiefs getting the win overtime against the Buffalo Bills 42 36. Saturday, both the number one seeds out of the playoffs and both games coming down to field goals. Bengals took down the Titans 19 16. Niners stunned Aaron Rodgers and the Packers 13 to 10. So we're all set. Here are the matchup for Sunday's championship games. Chiefs will host the Bengals at 2 p.m. for the AFC title game. Rams host the Niners 5:30 Sunday for the NFC championship. Winners of those games will face off in Super Bowl 56 at SoFi Stadium in L.A. on February 13th. And Jaffney, as Mike was mentioning, wouldn't it be a trip if the Rams made it to the Super Bowl and got to play the Super Bowl in their home stadium? Just right. Like the Buccaneers did last year. Like the Buccaneers did yeah. last year. Yep. Yeah, pretty I just, cool. Like I said, the winning team, my team. I Your claim team. it. You claim it. Mm -hmm. Okay, 626, <laughs> about 50 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a young girl and her family surprised by the generosity of their community at their local livestock auction. And the number of cases of attacks on law enforcement continues to rise. Uh, it was a deadly weekend in some parts of the country. The latest on these attacks when we come back. And taking a live look at the roads with TransGuide. We'll be right back. A busy intersection by day, a street racing strip by night. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say they had to shut it down. Several people now facing trouble with the law. I'll have that story. Well, as expected, we had some showers move through the area overnight into early this morning. We're standing by with Mike's Monday and his work week forecast. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, January 24th, and Jaffney Gray is in studio this morning with us. Hello. How you doing? Of Hi there. Course. Happy Monday to you. And to you. And it feels great outside. It's like a cool 50 degrees right now. Let's head over to our Mike Osterhage to get a better idea. It's supposed to get a little colder, right? <laughs> uh, yes, it will be colder by the end of the week, mm -hmm. and but not cold. I mean, not not like what we had last week with that big front that moved on through here. So, but it will be sort of jacket weather throughout most all of the week, with the exception of probably tomorrow afternoon. Then we'll talk about the weekend in a moment. Uh, roads still damp over there by 410 or on 410 by the airport and temperature as uh, Jeffney was talking about. Yeah, it's not bone chilling out there. Grab a jacket though, 50 degrees. The dew point is at 40, so we still have a fairly decent difference, what we call the dew point depression. And with that, some of the rain maybe that's being picked up on radar may be evaporating before it reaches the ground, kind of like what we had uh, somewhat last week. Not much of a breeze out there right now, and the uh, rain is still, well, in the northeastern half of our area. A lot of coverage, but very broken. Even a couple of heavier showers, especially uh, just heading in toward Nixon right now, and one or two maybe moderate showers, but most of this is definitely on the light side, just enough to make the roads kind of slippery over there. Leon Valley heading in toward 410, I-10 area. Down down by Lackland coming across 90. A lot of folks going to be dealing with that uh, coming in on 90 for your morning commute and then further up into portions of the hill country. And like I said, more of the heavier rain or at least a couple of spots with some heavier rain is down to the southeast. Don't be surprised if as the morning rolls on, there's even a clap or two of thunder off to the east and down to the southeast. Molden Mountain Cedar really dropped down from yesterday's count and throughout this morning, scattered showers. They will continue. I think they come to an end by probably by the end of the morning commute at least. And then partly cloudy skies later on today. We'll start to see more sunshine. First of all, well out to the west, mid fifties for a high temperature. So yes, it will be on the cool side today. Now tomorrow we warm up, but another front's going to move on through here. Although, like I said, it's not going to be this blast of cold air. Just kind of continue with jacket weather. A couple of showers, maybe late Thursday, early Friday. Once again, it's not going to be a real big rain event, unfortunately. Then we go into the weekend. Great looking. 
Nice and cool in the morning, nice and warm in the afternoon, and plenty of sunshine. Details, just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. So the big story all morning has been up 35. Is that still going on? Thankfully, Mike, uh, that is cleared out, so drivers aren't going to encounter any slowdowns up there towards 35 in New Braunfels. But we do have stalls. That's the new trending issue at this hour. We're looking at I-10 at Proband right now. Uh, you can see traffic is moving through that area without any problems, and this stall actually looks like it may be clearing out pretty soon. I'm keeping my eyes on that flashing line over there indicating a first responder is out there obviously assisting a driver just make sure to watch out but let's go ahead and bring your attention to the map because we're going to start here off us 281 southbound at nicoma street where we do have a stall that's been detected there as we jump down over here we spot another stall the one you just saw in that trans guide camera of i-10 eastbound at provent not causing issues but as you saw there are plenty of folks out there this morning so you have to take it slow on the roads let's jump up over here to us 90 right at 410 those eastbound lanes. We're going to find another stall there. So as you can see, that is a problem this hour. Uh, but as we take a look at the map and push out, we show you a pretty much a green start, but that's going to change possibly in the next few minutes when morning rush starts to kick in. But thankfully right now, if your travels are taking you through San Antonio, no big slowdowns. But for our friends that travel in from Bolverde, expect a 28 minute drive time coming into the San Antonio area. One last look at trans guy. Things are moving and that stall looks like it has cleared out. We're going to continue to keep our eyes on the road, but as always, keep your eyes on the road as well. Jaffney. Stephen, thank you. Now, it sounds like a race where there were no winners. In fact, San Antonio police tell us several people who took part in a street race now are facing trouble with the law. Officers say they were caught them just after the race broke up at the intersection of East South Cross and WW White Road. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, that seems like a pretty busy intersection, Katrina. I'm going to ask you what a lot of people are thinking right now. How in the world were people able to race there? Well, chances are on a normal Sunday night, things are different from this Monday morning traffic that we have out here. But police also told us that there were dozens of cars that were blocking off the roads here. And most of them had scrambled by the time officers arrived. They were responding to a call that was made by San Antonio firefighters after 1030 last night. The report was that there were about 100 cars blocking the intersection here and taking part in street racing. Police say when they got here, there was only one car that was still blocking the road. They had it and a truck towed away and issued citations to the people who were still here. Now, it seems that the situation that they had out here last night is nothing new. Police have told us in the past about a problem with street racing throughout the city. In some of those stories that we've covered, there have been deaths and injuries involved, but this time police say there were no injuries. Reporting live from the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Here's a look at the latest COVID numbers here in Bear County. Close to 4,000 new cases as of last night. That brings the seven-day moving average to almost 6,000. The hospitalization rate is still high. Right now, over 1,200 people are hospitalized with 263 in ICU, 125 on ventilators. If you're looking for a place to get your COVID-19 vaccine or your booster shot, or get tested even, take out your phone right now and scan the QR code on your screen. It will take you directly to our website, which has a list of all the area testing and vaccine sites, so you can find the one nearest to you. In your morning headlines, the number of cases of violence against law enforcement rising after an officer was shot in the nation's capital overnight. Now, this comes after at least two other officers were killed over the weekend, including a Harris County deputy in Houston. ABC's Rhiannon Alley reports now several states are stepping up efforts to go after illegal guns. Overnight, an ambush attack on police leading to a dangerous standoff in Washington, D.C. At least one officer rushed to the hospital after an armed suspect opened fire before barricading himself in a house. Before they could contact him, uh, he started firing shots at these officers. This attack coming on the heels of a shooting in Houston, Texas, that left Corporal Charles Galloway dead, and another shooting in New York City that killed rookie officer Jason Rivera. He lied to take care of everybody in the street, and the child he see, he give a hand, young people, baby, everybody. You're 22 years old. Rivera's mother racked with grief as the NYPD escorted her son's body to the funeral home. 
Rivera, one of at least 18 police officers killed in the line of duty since January 1st. Investigators say the gun used to shoot Rivera was a Glock with a high-capacity magazine and was allegedly reported stolen in Baltimore back in 2017. That particular gun, there's no other reason why he has one uh, than to commit a crime. Now, local officials are demanding the federal government take action to stem the flow of illegal firearms between states. In New York, Governor Kathy Hochul says states are coming together to launch a new task force to curb gun violence. The group is comprised of more than 50 agencies across nine states and is set to meet later this week. We have to do more to fight the scourge of illegal guns on our streets, and we need Washington teaming up with us, teaming up with locals to get it done. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. After last year's winter storm in February, preparation is on everyone's minds as we start to see colder temperatures. The city of San Antonio working with several other entities to make sure we're better prepared than last year. And there is a lot of decision making along the way. Max Massey spoke with Deputy City Manager of San Antonio Maria Villa Gomez yesterday as part of our leading essay segment to discuss this topic. Yes, Maria Villagomez joined us. We discussed a lot. Obviously, as we saw colder temps this past week, everyone in and around San Antonio seemed a little more on edge, especially after last year's February freeze. So that was one of the main topics we discussed. You know, what did the city, what did local leaders learn from last year and how can we move forward to make sure we are as prepared as possible? Well, we learned a lot. You know, one of the, the areas that uh, we focused on was communication. And uh, not just communication internally within the city, but also with the utilities. And most importantly, the communication to our community. I think from a resident's perspective, when there's a weather event like the one we had in February of last year, or the event that we had last week, they expect to see um, a united front with the city, the utilities, the county and other agencies that respond to an emergency like that. We also discussed the collaboration between city leaders and local entities, entities like CPS and SAWS, and what decision making goes into play before things are closed or gets postponed. You can find our full conversation right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Guys, back to you. Time now, 640, about 50 degrees. A community comes together in support of a small child battling cancer coming up on GMSA. We'll share with you a story of how a livestock show broke the rules for a good cause. 643, welcome back to GMSA. A livestock show in Gillespie County has brought one community together in a really big way. Jonathan Cotto shows us how they rallied together for an auction that was full of surprises. It's part of our KSAT Kids series. Hey, Charlie, we're going to kind of break the rules how we do this. Why? Well, cancer broke the rules in our community and they messed with one of our kids. That kid is 8-year-old Anders Eckerd, who is battling cancer. The community's response at the Gillespie County Youth Livestock Show earlier this month left Anders' mom, Melissa Eckert, speechless. It was unbelievable. Um, first of all, we didn't know any of this would be happening, obviously. And when they moved her to the end of the sale list we were kind of suspicious and then all of her friends and family and teammates got up on stage with posters and um, we immediately started sobbing. Anders was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. As the excitement at the livestock show grew, the bids came in fast. 50,000, 55,000, 55,000, 60,000. The total reached over $75,000. Everybody was just so willing to give. And so they had that number. And then people that hadn't heard about the giving were able to add on to it. Eckert says Anders is just finishing the toughest part in her treatment. As doctors hit the cancer hard in hopes of achieving remission within the first month of therapy. She adds it hasn't been an easy journey. Eckert and her husband are also caring for two other children. The livestock show ending with a total of $100,000 raised. With our community behind us, there's nothing we can't do. Now, Melissa says she's thankful to everyone who gave, including those she doesn't know personally. She tells us Anders is going through what doctors call maintenance, which should make life a lot more normal for Anders, less doctor's visits and at-home oral therapies. She says there is power in a community that bands together. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, Kiza 12 News.
Well, it oh. is 645. Over 100,000. I know, right? That's such a good cause. That's a blessing right there. 645, it's time to check traffic. Traffic's looking good right now as we're getting into that morning rush hour. I 10 at Crossroads. Uh, it's getting a little bit busier. Now we still have a little bit of traffic there off 35 at Kohlenberg where we had that major crash that was reported a little bit earlier this morning. So just watch out for that. But traffic here in town is moving nice and easy and freely here. Let's go ahead and take you to the map though because some stalls have been popping up here off I 10 eastbound at Wurzbach. This has not caused any issues, but be on the lookout because there's more detected right over here off 281 southbound at Nakoma Street. And as we jump down over here, we spot another one off 35 southbound at Riddiman and another one way over here off US 90 eastbound at 410. Now I did also see a slowdown when we push out of the map. You can see there in those eastbound lanes of US 90. We're going to find out what's going on there, but that could impact the drive time if you're heading into the San Antonio area in the next few moments. We'll keep a close eye on that, but right now the roads here in town have been in good shape for those morning rush for the morning rush hour guys. Green on the screen, and I saw a <laughs> couple wet spots on the yeah, roadways as well. Yeah, yeah, and that's the, it, it hasn't yeah. been a lot of rain, fortunately, unfortunately. I mean, you know, bad news is we could have used a whole bunch of rain. Good news is it's not um, too bad, but just damp enough on the roads to make things kind of slippery. As you can see, it's still pretty damp out there, 410 by the airport. And not much, if anything, is being picked up, obviously, on radar well out there to the west. Most of this is kind of in the northeastern half of our area. And as the morning's been rolling on, more of these um, somewhat moderate to even heavier showers been being picked up out there to the uh, east of us in town. It is primarily just again on the light side, just enough to make things kind of slow going. So allow yourself a little extra time and even right here uh, 281 going through almost basin down there around Von Orme and then they had a few showers still all morning long along 90. So, you know, it's going to be just kind of slow going, just a little extra time. There's those heavier showers off to the east. And don't be surprised if even there's a couple of cracks of uh, thunder out there off to the east of us, a few lightning strikes. And then up to the north, again, it's just scattered at best. And most of this will continue to come to an end in the next, uh, say, hour, couple of hours moving off to the east. And as far as the humidity, it's well, relative to the temperature, a little on the higher side, but then it's going to start to drop down. Now, with clear skies and no big drop in dew points and humidity by tomorrow morning, we could actually see some patchy fog around here. Then a front's going to move on through. It's not going to be a huge blast of cold air like what we had last week. This is going to uh, just kind of keep us in jacket weather, if you will, for the latter half of the week. Little fluctuation, and then we do have another chance for some rain Thursday into Friday. Then we uh, go into the weekend, and really dry air, good-looking weekend is setting up around here. Uh, we're going to have some cool mornings and some nice warm afternoons with plenty of sunshine. Here's the few showers today, and then we clear on out pretty nicely going into middle of the week more clouds move in and then the next chance of rain is going to be well now they're not great chance of rain or not big rain event I should say and that's going to be late for uh, Thursday into Friday and then we clear on out pretty nicely in behind that here's the little low that's moving across the area giving us the couple of showers and then we get into the middle part of the week we have this next little wave moving through here that gives us the next chance for some rain and then going on into the weekend we get this nice northwesterly flow around here and that's going to give us the like i said that beautiful weather for the weekend so today we are going to have maybe pushing things saying partly cloudy skies. Um, we'll have some sunshine showing up, especially off to the west by noon, 52 degrees, and then a high temperature makes it up to 55. So still, again, jacket weather today. Tomorrow, we've got to watch out for some fog in the morning and then 65 in the afternoon. So good looking day in the afternoon. Uh, more clouds Wednesday. We get, now the front moves through again, it's going to kind of come through dry, then that impulse uh, is going to give us a chance of rain by Friday, late Thursday, Friday, early, and then we clear on out for the weekend. Like I said, the weekend looks really nice, cool mornings, beautiful afternoons, last week of January already. What do you think, Jan? Not bad. Mm -hmm. I can dig it. Make some outdoor plans this weekend. Mm -hmm. We shall. Thank you very much, Mike. Right now, uh, 650, about 49 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up tomorrow on GMSA. Tomorrow on GMSA, learn how a 12-year-old rated chess player is turning his love for the game into a way to help others. And we're taking a live look across the city. Happy Monday, San Antonio. Stay with us. Some people may be waking up with regrets about a race last night. 
they are in trouble with the law. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say they caught those people after breaking up a street race here last night at the intersection of East South Cross and WW White. Now, San Antonio police say that they were actually called here by firefighters after 1030 last night. They say that they were tipped off that there were about 100 cars blocking off the streets here and taking part in a street race. When officers arrived, almost everyone had scrambled. They say they did find one car still blocking the street. They had it towed away along with one other vehicle. And police issued citations to a few people who they found here. But there were no injuries reported this time. But in the past, police have told us that street racing has led to injuries and death at, in areas all throughout the city. Reporting from the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up on GMSA 9, we'll explain the importance behind early learning and how it benefits children as pre-K for SA gets ready for open enrollment next week. Plus, how the pandemic has impacted children in the community and the program. That's later this morning on GMSA at 9. 6.55, let's take a last look at our traffic with our Stevie Cavazos. Good morning, it's a new day and people are out there moving. 35 at Randolph shows that an easy drive right in that area so far, I-10 at Dominion, but be on the lookout. We have some stalls, particularly this one I'm a little worried about off US 90 eastbound at Loop 410 where we can see a slowdown happening over there and be on the lookout for some debris that's out there off I-10 eastbound at Worsbach, Mike. And also watch out for some uh, kind of damp spots on the road. So you can see 410 over there by the airport. Uh, a little bit of a sheen on the road. And we still have some of these light sprinkly showers moving on through here. More of them are actually kind of picking up in intensity somewhat off to the east, heading in toward Gonzales. Maybe even a clap or two of thunder out there. But here in town, we'll continue to have, again, a few of these light little showers throughout the rest of the morning. And then, well, as far as temperatures, not anything brutally cold. Grab a jacket, though, but we're not going to warm up all that much throughout the day. 55 for high temperatures. Temperature later on today and tomorrow we make it up into the 60s after a cool start. Watch for some fog tomorrow. And then it's going to be jacket weather really throughout the rest of the week. Maybe another small chance of rain by late Thursday, early Friday. Good looking weekend setting up. All right. Thank you very much, Mike. And hats off to Jaffany Gray. She worked last night and then at the last yes. minute filled hey, in this job. morning. So thank you, Jaffany. You did yeah. great. It was by the grace of God. <laughs> thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you guys back here at GMSA at 9. Good morning, America is next.